All right, welcome again to another episode of NASA at Home Spaceport series. This is our Artemis week, and I'm joined, I'm Joshua Santora, NASA Communication at the Kennedy Space Center, and I'm joined by my very special guest today, Kelvin Manning. Uh, Kelvin, thanks for joining me. Hey, Josh, I'm excited to be here, you know, to celebrate, uh, to talk about Artemis week. That's what the agency is all about, returning us back to the moon. Yeah, and before we jump in, I want to give you guys kind of a nice flavor of the Kennedy Space Center. It's one of my, one of my favorite videos that we have to kind of show the breadth of what we're doing. Um, it's a couple years old, so some things that have definitely been updated since then, but it's a nice snapshot of the Kennedy Space Center. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Go. Somebody's go. Halos are go. GNC go. Go. Prop go. AVI go. GNC go. Ground is go. GC go. Go. OSM go. Go for initiate terminal count. FTS go. NASA CE go. 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 SMD is go for final count. BSC is go. Go. So that, I mean, to me, that kind of tells that story of we are the world's premier spaceport. Um, and as you saw a minute ago with Kelvin, his title, the Associate Director for Technical at KSC. Kelvin, what is it that you do as the Associate Director? Well, Joshua, you saw the, uh, the, the, the video. There's so much going on at KSC. As a senior manager, we do whatever it takes. I like to tell people to keep the wheels turning, the lights burning, the workforce turning so the rockets are flying, politicians buying, satellites soaring, astronauts exploring so the kids will learn and the public will yearn for America's space program. That's what we're doing at the Kennedy Space Center. Yes, fantastic summary there. Uh, and I, I'm sure that with everything going on, um, you have no shortage of things to keep you busy. Um, can you give us some historical perspective? Obviously, we, are, we have been through a time of transition, especially these past nine years from the end of the shuttle program. So historically to today, what's, what's really going on with KSE? Well, we've transformed the Kennedy Space Center into a multi-user spaceport. The last shuttle flight, of course, was July of um, 2011. And since then, we've been working um, to put humans back in space, launching again from American soil. And we want to launch them on American rockets. So that's coming with commercial crew. But since it's Artemis week, what we're focusing on is returning to the moon and then on to Mars. That's what uh, we've really been concentrating on, preparing the ground infrastructure to make that happen. Kennedy Space Center is the home of the Exploration Ground Systems Program. And that's the organization that will work on that ground infrastructure We'll prepare the ground infrastructure to launch the Orion spacecraft atop the Space Launch System rocket. And can you tell us, so you mentioned EGS, um, as we call them, Exploration Ground Systems. Can you kind of cover what are some of the specifics of their responsibility? Um, they have some of probably the most physically obvious and most historic elements to the Space Center, but what are those our pieces? Well, we'll start with the centerpiece of Launch Complex 39, and that is the Vehicle Assembly Building. That building was first built in 1966, started construction in 1962. So just think about it. One of the largest buildings in the world by volume when it was built, uh, it was completed in, in four years. And that's where the rocket will, the rocket will come together. Um, the pieces of the boosters, the core stage, the upper stage, and um, that'll be topped off with the Orion spacecraft. So we have the centerpiece there. Um, obviously, earlier, earlier in the week, we talked about Launch Complex 39B, which is great. Um, there we also saw the mobile launcher. Can you tell us more about the mobile launcher and the launch control center? Um, those are two other ones that are a huge part in us launching Artemis. Sure. So 
what the mobile launcher is, it's essentially a, a platform that the rocket is built upon. So if you had uh, a Legos or Taka toys, you bring in the, the mobile launcher, it's carried atop that crawler transporter. You see the, the video rolling there. The, the crawler transporter weighs about 6 million pounds and it's carrying this mobile launcher that weighs over 20 million pounds. And um, I'm sorry, it, it weighed between 11 and 12 million pounds. And the entire stack with the rocket and the boosters, when it rolls out to the pad, it'll weigh over uh, 20 million pounds. That's what I meant to say. So that's what the rocket is, is built on, and it's delivered to the launch pad. It's set atop um, pedestals, secured to the pad, and uh, the rocket lifts off from the mobile launcher. You also asked about the launch control center. Um, just like the name implies, that's where the launch countdown is, is worked. And part of our preparation is preparing the, the software and all the programs that enable us to, to test and fuel and launch the rocket. So what does it mean for you, Kelvin, as we think about being a multi-user spaceport, getting ready for more more missions to the moon and a sustained presence on the moon. Um, as an associate director, obviously you have a, a huge vested interest in this professionally and I'm sure personally as well. Oh, absolutely. You know, as a NASA employee or just as an American, as a, as a human being, for us to leave this planet and travel to the moon, it, it's incredible. If you think about it, in the history of a humankind, only four humans have set foot on the moon and uh, of those 12, there's only four surviving members. So what we want to do, you know, we want to put the, the, the first woman, the next man on, on the moon by 2024. And personally, I hope those four will still be around so they can say that, hey, they did it. We made yeah. it back to the moon. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's obviously a nice snapshot of KSC and some of our uh, heavy work towards Artemis. Can you tell us a little bit more about the agency as a whole? Obviously, in your position, you kind of have exposure to a lot of what's going on. So what is happening agency-wide today? So what's NASA doing? Well, first, let's talk about commercial crew. That's who with SpaceX and Boeing. We're going to the space station as one nation because, man, I'm not talking about no Kazakhstan. It's launching right here from the Florida sand. Quicker than your mama's minivan. Under the sun, 54321, and we're not going to be outdone. And better tune in to NASA TV early because you don't want to miss the first launch of my friends, Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley. So join the Jubilee, but don't forget about the JWST. So big, make Hubble feel smaller than Barney Rubble. Yes, you'll start skipping rope when you learn about the wonders of the James Webb Space Telescope. And all the knowledge it will disperse, teaching us more about the universe. And that's no exaggeration, but it's also time to introduce the Artemis generation. Yeah, Apollo is a tough act to follow, but here's the plan. We're sending the first woman and the next man, headed to the moon, it'll be happening real soon. Esther Lust and Orion on pad 39B, lit up like a Christmas tree. A giant rocket, louder than Toad the Wet Sprocket, ready to be set free, flying right out of KSC. And understand, this ain't no flash in the pan, so make way for the gateway, because this time we're going to stay. And we're not fighting off more than we can shoot, because we got new partners like Max Sara Blue. One day, you could be an astronaut, give that some thought. You'd be one of the select few in the human race up there floating in space. Plus, learning about lunar ice would be nice, but nothing like the adoration you're going to get when you tell your professors you have perfected in situ utilization. Every day, overturning the big rocks and thinking out of the box to get us moving close to Mars, we need everyone to keep reaching for the star. Back to you, Josh. Wow, Kelvin, that is a lot happening. Yeah, okay, but I'm sure Amanda would still say, that's sweet as strawberry jam, but what about my launch services program? Yep, there's so much excitement of plenty, I forgot to even mention Mars 2020. You don't need a top secret clearance to learn about our new rover called Perseverance. And yeah, your friends might want to call you doctor when they hear you talking about a Mars helicopter. Tell them no need to check your mental acuity. NASA's really got a copter and it's called Ingenuity. So this summer, when you're out doing your fish fry and eat your Boston cream pie, don't forget, Mars 2020 is happening this July. There you go. Oh, Kelvin, man. Uh, appreciate you so much. Thank you for your time today. Obviously, we're excited. All eyes on the Kennedy Space Center as we get ready to return to the moon. It's, it, it is very exciting. Thanks, Josh, and for everything you guys are doing. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. And reminding everybody to tune in the rest of the week for more on the Artemis program. And as always, reminding you that this, even the sky isn't the limit.